I'm recording. Welcome back to the um, e-lightning sessions, the overall webinar of um, the Earth Day Symposium, Ninth Earth Day Symposium. Uh, we have three e-lightning talks to kick off session two. Um, and, um, and how many posters? We have six posters in session two. Then there'll be sort of a break. Uh, we'll have session three at three o'clock, session four at 4.30. Um, and then at seven o'clock, um, the Rising Tides concert and social hour um, is going to be a, sort of a preview of, of things. The grand opening for the, the grand concert will be next week um, because um, the musicians um, were in contact with COVID, so they, we couldn't record the final pieces. Um, but it should be a fun evening to sort of end off the day socially, um, talk to the artists uh, and get a little preview of, of things. Um, and potentially wind down a little bit in the in the evening. So uh, join us for that at seven o'clock. Um, the links are there uh, in the schedule. Um, session two kicking off, we're gonna go in the order of, um, Irina is gonna go first and then Yvonne and then Yasmin. Any questions or comments from anyone? Awesome, Irina developing. Um, uh, a Hyala Azteca embryo toxicity assay. Yes, um, I don't know why, but my camera won't turn on. It says that you have turned off the okay, ability. So how, do, how do I, um, okay, let me see if I can do this here. Um, what did I do last time? Uh, there's probably a button only on yours as the host that under, allows under um, what under i think it's probably on your bar i think you can go to participants and it should show you panelists and attendees if you click on the panelist you should be able to click on the video button to show the video yeah, it doesn't allow me to do that. Um, no, there was another button somewhere, which I think is in your bar, because I do have that. It showed up magically at the last second. It, in my bar, it says what? It says, oh my god. Do you have to invite them to unmute or uh, show the video? No. Yeah, I didn't no on the first time. No, you just found a button that said allow I found panelists a button. that said allow panelists oh, here it is. to show. It's in my three dots at the bottom of my oh. mute all button. Allow panelists to start video. That's good. Hey, I found it. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Arena, take it away. Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Arena. I am a first year master's student working in Dr. Helen Poynton's lab. Um, my research thesis includes developing an embryo toxicity assay using the freshwater amphipod Hylella azteca as a model organism. When I first came to UMass Boston, I had a lot of interest in ecotoxicology. Um, and as I started to explore what I wanted to do for my project, I became more and more interested in development and how different pollutants affect development in different organisms. So with the help of Dr. Poynton, we started playing around with the idea of an embryo toxicity assay using Hylella Azteca for potential toxicity tests. Um, so in order to develop the method for this experiment, I explored different embryo toxicity tests with different organisms. So I looked at Daphnia, zebrafish, other crustaceans, and more specifically Parhylella, Parhyleli hawaiinensis. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, I decided to focus on Parhyleli as it was an organism that was closely related to Hylella um, comparatively to you know, Daphne and zebrafish. Um, and it was also well characterized in its embryonic development um, because Parhyleli is a model organism used in development and uh, genetic analysis. Um, so once I was able to identify some successful embryo toxicity tests that I could replicate in Hylella, I divided my work into two parts. Part one, which I will talk about in my poster, and then part two is what I will be doing in the following months. The four part one, I characterized um, Hylella embryon development, embryo development in six discernible stages using the par Hylella embryonic um, stages as a guide. I have a really nice video on my poster that shows what is happening at each stage. Um, and with 
uh, time scales as well. So I actually have a table that has um, each stage and how long it takes Hylella to get to that stage um, in terms of embryonic development. Um, finally, my work also looked at um, understanding the mechanisms behind mating pairs, including can mating be induced by placing male and females together, um, how long it takes uh, for them to be in their mating pairs, and how are embryos deposited. I think I answered all of those questions in my part one of my project, hopefully. Um, we will find out. And if anyone's interested, um, please check out my poster on part one of my research thesis. And you'll see a really cool video. <laughs> awesome. Plug Thank you so much, Irina. Our next speaker is Yvonne, taking us to Nantucket. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm so glad to be speaking on Earth Day about our field station, but also just a little bit about field stations and marine biological labs in general. Um, I uh, want to tell you that there is a lot of text on my poster and there's also a video. So for those of you unfamiliar with the Nantucket Field Station, you should watch the video. It's a little virtual tour. Um, couldn't fit everything in, but it's a nice overview. And the rest of the poster uh, highlights a range of things, uh, specifics about our field station, a little background history, also our course list that is typical of what we run in the summertime and um, the different courses that we rotate. We don't always run the same courses and they range greatly. Uh, they're mostly uh, School for the Environment and Biology courses, but we also run history classes and historical archeology, span just like the research that gets done both by our UMass uh, students and faculty. We also support people from other institutions and you can see that under the research box. There's a, a long list of seminars that are also available um, and some short clips, but most of our resources that are on our YouTube channel are full length seminars that are about an hour long. So if you're interested in any of those, you can check them out later by uh, downloading the iPoster. Um, I also just want to say that the role of field stations in marine biological labs for the environmental sciences is extremely crucial and um, that's where students typically get their um, first uh, hands-on environmental experience and it is a transformative one and so when you do your work at a field station whether you're a graduate student or a faculty member or you choose to teach a course there you're adding to the legacy of what they provide for the globe uh, and there is approximately 12 hundred or more field stations and marine labs globally. And we are the network that provides the data uh, that helps us to meet the challenges of our environmental issues that are increasing. And I'll end with that. And I'm happy to talk to you. Please check out my poster. Uh, it also has a link about opportunities and grant money available. So be happy to talk to anyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yvonne. And uh, we're ramping up activity back from COVID and into the future. Um, a wonderful opportunity to get out to Nantucket and um, a lot of resources, but also to compare with Boston Harbor, the urban setting is a really nice contrast. So take advantage of the opportunities as they come through the summer and, and into the next year. Uh, and our last e-lightning talk is Yasmin um, taking us to Stellwagen Bank. Hi everyone, um, my name is Yasmin. Um, I'm a graduating senior with a major in environmental science. Um, so my poster is about my um, senior thesis I've been working on um, for the past semester. And it's on the effects of the climate change on the Stellwagen Bank National Marine Sanctuary. Um, so the Stellwagen Bank is located within the Gulf of Maine, situated right outside of Boston and it's home to incredible amounts of biodiversity and is relied by humans recreationally and commercially. Um, and most of the research was satellite based coming from National Oceanographic um, Atmospheric Administration and NASA's Giovanni's website. And I used um, three different satellites and one remodeled data set. Um, and I focused on data between 2002 and 2009, um, collecting data from chlorophyll, fluorescence, CDOM, PAR, inorganic carbon, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide emissions, CO2 concentration, and pH within the Gulf of Maine. Um, all of these factors are um, individual components under 
climate change um, and they work together to create a larger problem. Um, and so marine life is affected by it. Um, Although more research is needed, um, we see that chlorophyll has increased as well as temperature variation. And we actually see a decrease in carbon monoxide levels, um, which is good. Um, but um, that's about it. I just wanted to give a special thank you to Professor Lee um, for overseeing my thesis and Kelly Lewis, my thesis advisor. Um, she really helped me a lot with this project and she taught me a lot about programming R and the technical stuff with satellites. And I definitely couldn't have done it without her. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Yasmin. And thank you to all of our eLightning uh, presenters. Um, we're, it's now time to end this webinar and, to, and we'll rejoin this at three o'clock for session three um, eLightning talks. But we have a full 75 minutes to explore the six posters in session two. So I will see you bopping around the, the rooms in uh, the session two posters. Um, and, um, and then we'll rejoin at this same webinar at three o'clock. Take care.